Fooly Cooly or FLCL. Yes, the last Geek Library I did was War Games, and this is, mm -hmm. of course, a movie that everyone has seen before. Right. So this time I wanted to pick something that no one's ever heard of and no one's ever seen. Cool. But it has a lot of merit in itself. It's called Fooly Cooly or FLCL. Now, these are nonsense words. This doesn't mean anything. Mm. The person who made this decided that he liked the way it sounded. I like the way it sounds. Yeah, Fooly Cooly. And it's Japanese <laughs> animation. And what I think is the coolest part about it is, you know how in The Simpsons, mm -hmm. everything is sort of random and crazy yeah. and strange and sort of not the non sequiturs? That's a, a lot of cool things about this video. There's like, all of a sudden it'll change into comic strip, and then all of a sudden it'll change into the characters watching themselves on the screen commenting. Mm -hmm. And then there's adventure, and my favorite character, who we're going to see in this clip coming up, mm -hmm. she is a pink-haired, yellow-eyed uh, alien rock star. Mm. And she hits people with her electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully your decor matches. So anyway, we are talking about decorating today. It's Tech at Home Week, so we're showing you how to bring a little bit of technology and make your home life a little better. So I'm bringing you the Ross Furniture application. It's made by a furniture store, but it really is just simple and lets you plan out your floor plans. So now if we get scanned out, we can look at my bedroom. This is what my bedroom looks like. Isn't that great? So here's my bed. And here's my doors, and here's my couch, this kind of thing. And it's very easy. You just uh, select from a bunch of different kinds of sofas, you know, anything. There's beds, there's tables. I think I'd like a settee. So then I just click it, it's over here, and then I can move it to wherever in my room I want to. Then I can really test out different, apple, you know, different floor plans. Maybe I want to put my bed over here. Um, yeah, it's simple. It's free. It's a small little application. Just go to thescreensavers.com for the link and start decorating. My email address is morgan at techtv.com. Let me know if you like this application or not. Another cool thing is you can print your floor plans and you can save your floor plans. I forgot to tell you that. So we're going to talk now, if you're a game player, you've yes. obviously you probably collected a lot of games. And one of the problems is when you get to a new game system, you kind of have to leave the game behind. For instance, you, I know you love your Game Boy. Now, this is the latest Careful. one. The, the SP. <laughs> I won't drop it. Uh, but if you've got a Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, or Game Boy SP, now there's a way you can play these games yes. on your GameCube. And this is even more important because this, the SP, has a backlight. The old Game Boy Advances weren't backlight. You couldn't really. You, you had to buy these lighting contraptions yeah, and was, you were staring for, at them. It was for eight-year-olds. Oh, yeah. With really good eyes. Even you noticed that, huh? You can't see them unless you're like in full bright sunlight angling it just right. So what is this? There? Okay. This is the Game Boy Player. It's just sort of this little plastic thing. It doesn't look like it's going to do anything. But you go ahead and you flip over your GameCube. So I'll have to have a GameCube to you use this. You have to have a GameCube. Okay. And it just, these little covers come off for other accessories. Yeah. And this and is one of them. This is one of them. And you just, it's Should we install it? It's supposed to stick it on. Oh, well, that was easy. How many fans would you say are in love with you? Oh. Like a percentage. They just say they are. Does it count if they're under 14? Yes, fine. Okay. Um. I don't know. I have a lot of younger fans. So is this is this creepy? Is this scary to you? No, it's cool because then I'm not threatened by it or anything. You know, it's fine. It's just like one of the parts of the job. It's like a fun thing. You know, you get your email. Sometimes you get sent boatloads of Sharpies. Or no, Sharpies. Smarties. That's what they're called. Candy. Yes, candy. Candy is a good thing. We all like candy. So what did you do before you came to tech TV to this glorious place. What, what did you do for a living? Before I did like um, web stuff, like I was in charge of a website for .com, so we just like, you know, I did lots of like, a little bit of JavaScript kind of thing, like just kind of like maintenance, but nothing complicated at all, and like just sort of doing all, you know, contracting out stuff. You know, I went to UC Berkeley, which means I am all about good deals in education. Berkeley, I have to say, is one of the best deals in education oh, out there. Great school. Great school. State school. Yes, an excellent price. Yep. Which is why, for my side of the night, I wanted to bring something educational. Because usually there's, you know, monkeys dancing around the site or something yes. like that. Let's do something Let's smart. Let's do something educational. I agree with okay. you. Okay, well, I learned how to do JavaScript from the Netscape JavaScript guide. Whew. That was hard, wasn't it? It was. It's. Yeah. I actually printed it out yeah, at my old yeah. job. I wasn't doing much. It was about this thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. not the best, best way to learn. No, I, think. I should have used it as a reference, but yeah. I found something a little bit better. Macromedia actually has an excellent one, and they walk you through a series of exercises. And this is a great way to learn JavaScript, and it's completely free. Scoops on the cool new anime show. Anime. Anim anime. 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 Yes, who's ready to talk some anime? 
I am. Oh, we got one guy up in the back. I, I am. All right. I okay. Am. Leo, I'm talking now. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, right now, tech... I'm sorry. Right now, Tech TV is playing Better Man. Better Man is a gut-wrenching mix of comic, cartoonish imagery, and horror. It starts off in an amusement park where hundreds of employees have been found dead. It gets weird and disturbing from episode one. So get ready for the mind twist on Anime Unleashed Friday, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We play it later at night because it's not really for the younger set. About this high, maybe, but not this high. Okay. This high? Okay. In other anime news, I would like to mention that Miyazaki's Spirit Away received an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Film. The original animation and subtle storyline bring you into a complete fantasy land when you walk into a theater. My favorite part is it's not insipid like most children's you know, animation. And here is hoping the film leaves with the Oscar. Gosh, that music's funky. It's very funky. All right, you are not limited to a single cut and paste because your clipboard now accepts multiple items. So you can cut three items, 10 items, 24 items. Okay, 24 is the limit. You can do 24. All right, let me show you how it's done. I have Word. Now, this is in Word 2000 and up, so 2000 and XP. It's going to work out for you. So let me show you. I have our little article. I actually got this off the screensavers.com, so you know how interesting it's going to be. And I want to cut and paste a bunch of stuff. So I'm just going to cut, you know, select this, and then I'm going to hit Control and C, and that's going to copy it to my clipboard. Nothing really to see here. Uh, I also would like to copy, mm, here's numbers. Numbers are good. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to hit Control C again. Now, what happens is now I have two things in my clipboard. What normally happens in Windows is, you know, one item, clipboard item, is going to bump the next clipboard item. You can only have one in your clipboard at a time. In Word, you can have up to 24. So I just go down here. I'm going to paste it down here. I can select this one. It is going to just paste it. Select this one. It'll paste it. Or I can just paste all or clear all. What did you study in, in college? studied rhetoric. Rhetoric. What? I have no idea. What's rhetoric? Rhetoric is like the study of language and semantics and words to express meaning and argument. So we studied a lot of philosophy and looked at the arguments that people would make and you know, how they chose what words to make them and how they use like certain different types of arguments to make them. And so basically it's a lot of philosophy, but you're studying the arguments of the philosophy as opposed to the philosophy itself, which appealed to me because it had like a stronger, more realistic base than philosophy could, but I still got to study philosophy and be all esoteric and everything. Yeah. And I studied, I think it was really good because I, I wrote a lot, um, so it really helped my writing. And I studied Italian, too, and a minor in Italian. So you speak Italian. You speak the Italian. Hey, hey, hey. Well, what, uh, speak to me in Italian, Morgan Webb. I want to hear it. Speak something. Say something. Basta così. Andiamo. I can't, actually. Because I have an old adventure game for you to play. That's a, yeah, if it's played a new most, adventure game. I haven't game, played this. This is very fun. If it's a new adventure game, would it be free? No. Of course not. People got to get paid. So um, this is called Dink Smallwood. Dink Smallwood. Dink Smallwood. Mm -hmm. And you're this sort of happy-go-lucky guy, not very um, tough or adventurous anyway, but the forests are filled with evil monsters ruled over by the evil Seth and you have to defeat the evil Seth. And it's just one of those games where you have to get the crystal to get into the cave, to talk to the person, uh -huh. to, you know, run like through the, the woods. Like the Legend of Zelda. These exactly. These things that drive you nuts. If you don't do it on the right order, you, you go bonkers, kind of. Actually, I kind of like this game. See, now he's talking to the wizard, and the wizard's telling him to meet him somewhere to give him some, like, secrets and magic. I'm not going to give away how the game works. But the, the cool thing that I like about this game is that if you don't really feel like... Um, playing exactly by the story, it doesn't like put a stone wall up in front of your face. That's good. Yeah. You don't need to buy the cheap guide to win this game. No, exactly. Bill O'Reilly, welcome to Tech TV. You're known as a hard-nosed interviewer on the Fox News Network. If you could ask Bill Gates anything on the record, what would it be? Bill Gates? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Let's see. I would probably grill him about his, uh, his competitive plans. You know, I mean... I don't know what he does as far as Monopoly is concerned or how much pressure he puts on his distributors or how he attacks the, uh, the uh, opposition. But I would find out before I interviewed Gates. I would get all the charges the government lodged against him during the Clinton administration. I'd fetter at them out. And I'd probably ask him a few questions about his money, too, about you know, what he does with it, that kind of thing.
Now, you obviously have an opinion about the technology of the war. Do you think technology has really given America an advantage? Oh, no question that USA has got a tremendous military advantage with the uh, high-tech stuff that they have, particularly in the communications field. Because you see the soldiers now wearing the little mics and everything like that, and they can uh, uh, call anywhere they want if they get in trouble. They don't have to use flares anymore. And, and it's, it's a really sophisticated area. And then a weaponry, the high-tech weaponry, is just... And people don't know how destructive these things are. And that's why Afghanistan went so quick. Because as soon as they moved in with all these high-tech weapons, the Taliban went... You know, it was no question because, you know, people like in the third world have never seen or even conceived of these kinds of weapons. So it gives us a tremendous advantage. Your website promotes uh, viewer interaction from charity, voicing your opinion, current events, that kind of thing. Do you feel people are more empowered when they sit behind their computer? The key to any website is to have fun. So what we try to do on BillOReilly.com is we try to set up a website where the viewer and listener can then give their opinion about the subjects that we cover and debate others who are in the website at the same time so therefore I get engaged by debating on television they can do the same thing that I do on the website oh, we have polls I mean 20,000 people came in the last two days on should we boycott French goods um, and you can right away and we send those polls. we're gonna send that poll on Friday right to the French Embassy I mean I do a private for uh, premium member people I do a private uh, kind of a Q&A every week where, and nobody else sees that. I mean, it's not something like I give it to them and then I do it for the TV or radio show. Uh-uh. That's solely for them. You'd love it, Morgan. You I'll would love that. There's a lot of gossip going on in there. You know, a lot of inside stuff. How else do you use technology in your personal life? I'm, I'm not a technology guy. Not at all? No. How do people get in touch with you and keep, how do you keep up with the world? Pigeons. Yeah? Yeah. You have to send me a They're note by a, by a little days, carrier pigeon in. I'm really hopeless. Morgan, yeah. I, you know, I'd have to hang around with you. If you watch tech TV, you're going to have a cell phone and a Blackberry all on your belt. That's right. And then lightning will hit me and I'll be dead. <laughs> well, thanks for talking with tech TV. Pleasure. <laughs> I can shut down my computer without using my hands. I have highly developed mental abilities. Thinking hard. Yeah! Just wait. I'm going to do it in front of a live audience, in front of you. <laughs> the first thing that I have to do is I'm going to go into my power options in my control panel. So let's do that together, shall we? And I'm in my power options in the control panel, and I click on my advanced tab. And under power buttons, when I press the power button on my computer, I want it to shut down. Now, it's usually set to this by default, but just check and make sure that it's like this. And also, some motherboards are not going to support this feature, so if you don't have this little choice, I'm very, very sorry. Okay, so we're done. Now I'm going to shut down the computer without touching it. First I have to back up and I'm going to use my toe. Dink! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Morgan right here with her Windows tip to make using remote desktop a touch easier. Because it's it can be a little bit complicated and Painful even. yeah and if say you need to let your mom or a family member get access to your computer for files or something like that I just want mom or just to, to mess around computer. in the registry right. <laughs> well no, you know what I mean but um you can actually save the settings into a link right on your desktop so you just click the link once and it will connect you automatically to whatever computer as long as really? of course you have set up access so I create a link to someone else's computer. Right. I can save that file and store it almost like an HTML document on the it's, desktop. It's just a, it's an R .rdp file, an remote R desktop R something. I don't really know exactly. But so you just click once on the icon and you connect directly to that computer. Let's see it. All right, let me show you, let me show you the effect first of all. So I have my morgan.rdp on the desktop. And I'm going to go, just click it. And it's going to say, doo doo, ta da. That's somebody else's system, isn't That's it? That's our system, you know, over in the corner. So. Wow. You know, I can do whatever I need to do. I can get the files I need to get. I can check the email, all that kind of stuff. It must take hours to set that up. It's so easy. You don't even know. Okay, so <laughs> let me close out of this. This will disconnect. So then you go to your basic remote desktop, and you go through this in the start menu. I just have a shortcut on the desktop to make it easier for us to find. And you just click options. And you just tell it the computer, you know, one, two, three, dot, four, five, six, dot, do, 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 do. So is that the IP address? That would be the IP address. What do I do if the it's, computer. it has DHCP and it changes a lot? Well, that's going to be different. Okay. But this, this is just setting it up for someone to make it very easy. Okay. Okay. So then you go save as. And then I'm just going to put my little link on the desktop and I'm going to call it new dot RDP. Save. Or anything else. Or whatever. 
Okay. Bob, Joe, whatever. Um, so now I have new.rep on my desktop, and when I click on it, it will connect to this mysterious IP address, which of course doesn't exist because I made it up. But, um, <laughs> but then that's all you have to do. So you're sitting there in front of millions of people, and Windows just crashes. You know, the idea of a different operating system was a little bit appealing. Um, it's a little bit hard to figure out, but with the help of my friends with the screensaver, stall it, try it out. But once I got it working right, it just comes like a dream. I have a real operating system on my computer. I'm fighting the man. I'm fighting Microsoft. It's like... <laughs> no introduction needed. Morgan Webb. Me. What is your geek library pick? This is one of my favorite movies. I would have to say second only to, of course, Real Genius with Val Kilmer. <laughs> Which um, is not yet available on DVD. A travesty. No, July 16th. July 16th. <laughs> not that I keep track of such things. Um, <laughs> this is an anime film. It's called Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. And I'm going to tell you why. Why? Okay, first I'd like to do a little disclaimer. It's not for the little ones. First so of all... Is this is an R-rated anime? This is not rated, but I'm going to give it an R. Okay. It has a little bit of cybernetic toplessness little bit of language, but I think that the very intelligent subject matter mm -hmm. makes up for these downfalls. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about is that it's a very beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. I know that you've seen it. Visually stunning. And I mean, the music amazing. just correlates so well with all of the images. Like, every shot is planned out very specifically. The hallmark of great anime. It's very true. The other thing I'd like to talk about, I'm going to give a quick rundown of the plot. This is 2029. Mm -hmm. People and machines have been integrated seamlessly. People, you know, connect to the internet. They connect their brains directly to the internet. I'm just thinking about the three-fingered salute from earlier in the show. Well, so then there's this hacker, codenamed the Puppet Master, also known as Project 2501. The reason Puppet Master is so powerful, I love this movie, <laughs> is that you can actually ghost hack into people because people are machines and machines are people. Got it. I'm Got just it. wondering how many times you've seen this. So many times. Because you're rattling this off perfectly. I've seen it a lot. Okay. <laughs>